Even the Alberta NDP knew that a carbon tax would kill the greenhouse industry in the province because it would make those businesses less competitive with those in British Columbia. You see, the province next door also has a carbon tax, but they rebate their greenhouses back up to 80% of what they pay because although these businesses do use fossil fuels, the plants also absorb carbon dioxide during photosynthesis. Hence the slogan, CO2 is plant food. So the NDP followed suit and made the same arrangements for Alberta growers. But this isn't the case in Ontario. And you know, the federal Liberals who have promised Canadians a carbon tax should really be taking notes about this whole fiasco because we all know how much our Minister of Environment and Climate Change, Catherine McKenna, loves the industry that she's about to kneecap. Anyway, Ontario's cap and trade program is especially brutal as this article in the Financial Post outlines. You see, the Ontario government doesn't recognize that plants consume CO2, so greenhouses don't get a break from the tax that was brought in on January 1st of this year in that province and has these businesses paying $18 a ton for carbon just for now. The worst thing about this is that the greenhouse industry in Canada is growing rapidly as that article in the Financial Post states. It's increased in size by over 800 acres in five years, which represents over 600 million in construction investments, but cap and trade will cost the industry over 10 million this year alone. It's enough to put the little guy out of business and stunt growth in a prospering industry, but keep the larger greenhouses going so that they can monopolize the industry because really, they'd be the only ones that can afford that tax. And not only would they be able to afford it, but they get a perk that the smaller growers don't. Any one of them producing over 10,000 tons of carbon gets a rebate that brings the tax down to zero. However, that only includes a minority of greenhouses, so the majority are left high and dry. But a spokesman from the Environment Ministry says that the government has committed $150 million to help retrofit agricultural facilities. So that should help, right? Does anyone else see a problem here? Businesses shouldn't need the government to throw money at them just because a government policy is too expensive. What's more is this just signals that the carbon tax is really just that bad of a policy and shouldn't be in place at all. It's a government cash grab that can potentially put some businesses that would otherwise have huge potential, including tax potential for the government, right out of business. Instead of repealing the business killing tax, on top of the carbon tax, citizens have to subsidize growers to stay afloat, which means more money out of the taxpayer's pocket. And that's how the Ontario Liberals like to solve problems, not by implementing solid policies that promote prosperity, or reversing bad ones to save everyone money, but by providing government welfare. It just doesn't make any sense, but does anything an overreaching government do make any sense? Like I always say, the government should really just get out of the way of business, and this is just another example on a very long list of that. For the Rebel.media, I'm Holly Nicholas. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, you might like our premium content. Starting at just eight bucks a month, you still get access to all of our free stuff plus our full length shows. You can visit our website for all of the options and don't forget to check out all of the latest for the other side of the story while you're there.